Welcome to the Better Events Podcast. Join two event strategists, Logan Clements and Mary Davidson, who believe we can all create, host, and attend better events. Now let's get started, and thanks for listening to the Better Events Podcast. All right, yes, we are the Better Events Podcast. I'm Logan Clements and joined by Mary Davidson, and we are so excited to bring you this new project that we have been working on for weeks, Mary, or or months now at this point. Um, Months. (laughs) months. It's definitely been something that we've wanted to share with the world. Like we said, we're here to share our knowledge with other planners and managers because we believe that you can host and create better events. And as an attendee, you can just go to better events. And so a little bit about me before we get going, and then Mary will introduce herself. Um, I am Logan Clements. I'm a freelance event producer based in Seattle, Washington. I pre-COVID in the before times was working in a lot of sports production and presentation. Also worked with some nonprofits and corporate events, but really was in my element when I was in a sports stadium, directing mascots on where to go and entertain people. And since COVID hit, I've been doing everything virtually and doing virtual production, producing virtual conferences, galas, happy hours, birthday parties, you name it. Again, providing a lot of that information of how to entertain people in stadiums into our computer screens and how we can entertain people now at home. And so that's been kind of what I'm up to. I've I've run my own company. It's called Logan Strategy Group. I joke a lot of people don't know the company name. They just know my name and I'm okay with that. But I am at loganstrategygroup.com if you want to check out more of what I do. Mary, you want to show yourself? Yes, I do. Thank you, Logan. So my name is Mary Davidson. Uh, My company is called EP Events, E as in events, P as in purpose. And um, I am also based out of the Seattle area as well, specifically the Tacoma area. So shout out to the Tacoma area if you know where that is. Um, My background with event planning is mostly in fundraising events for nonprofit organizations. And that started a while ago and then morphed into something else and then starting my own business. Um, and then luckily had the pleasure of meeting Logan. And so we've been able to tag team on some fun projects together, especially this last year in the virtual world. Um, they've been like national conferences, conventions, fundraisers, and we worked with a lot of speakers, a lot of attendees. And it's been a really, I would say Logan, a really wide range of events, like different sizes, like from a size of 50 or less in the audience to like thousands. And so it's been, it's been a fun spread for sure. Because of that range, I know it's been really fun in the after times of COVID of trying to figure out and explain what we do, because I, I do say that we can, we're can we chameleons in somewhat, and a lot of the event industry has been drastically impacted. And I think those that have been able to quickly make that switch to virtual have you know fared a little better than those that might have been just still waiting around for in-person to come back. Um, but that's something I've loved is actually, fun fact, Mary and I have not We've met in person glancingly, I would say. And then like at other events. Yeah. yeah, Like around each other at events. Like not on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But since then, our our friendship and partnership and a lot of these different um, initiatives and things that we're doing has really blossomed in the virtual world, which is pretty funny because I think we're in a time where we feel like we're missing out on connection. And I know, Mary, you're not no exception. I feel like I have other virtual event friends that I are saying they're virtual friends because I've never physically met them in person, but I've worked with them a lot and trust them as if I had met them in person, which is pretty cool, I think. It's super cool. I totally agree. Like some of the projects that we've worked on together, there's been a team of people from all over the United States and I never would have met them otherwise. And so it's amazing. Now I feel like I have friends, like when life does go back to normal and I'm like in LA, I can go visit one of our fellow event planners because now I know her. And so, yeah, it's, it's a fun way to, to network and get to know others as well. It's been, it's been really nice in that sense. Yeah, and I think that really ties in nicely with like why we wanted to start this podcast. I know both you and I have each played around with the idea of starting a podcast over the years, but if the question is why now and why this podcast called Better Events, and a lot of it is those cool people that we've met and learning their stories and their expertise. And because of COVID and doing it virtually, we're not you know, constrained to just our local market and wanting to have an outlet where we can talk about things we know about events and how we've been seeing best practices and helping people improve but also bringing our friends in who are experts in their own field, some in events, some events adjacent, and getting to talk with them and just share what they know with the world. Because I think a lot of people that we know one-on-one have got some great stories to share and we haven't found an outlet yet for them to be able to do that. Yeah, definitely. I know um, personally for my business as an event planner too, I'm I'm always looking for different networks of groups to connect with so that we can help each other out. And 
it's something that I've found it harder to find in the event planning world a little bit. There's there's a lot of them out there, but I want to find like the quality and the people who are really going to support each other. So I hope that this can be a platform for that um, and just a chance to to come together and create better events, right? So that's the goal. Yeah, and we talked about kind of a little bit of what we're looking with with guests, but I think if you're a listener, and all of you, since this is episode one, our first time listeners, um, what you can plan on kind of getting out of this podcast is getting to learn from Mary and my experience, learn from the experts and friends that we're going to bring on the podcast, because a lot of times I get asked, you know, how did you get started? And a lot of what you, you can't really learn it in school. There's no, I'm sure there are event management programs at certain niche schools you can go to. Yeah. But a lot of what you do, you only learn by doing it. Um, But I think you can also learn by listening to other people's experiences, their best practices. I always joke when I go to events, virtual or in person, I am somewhat like investigating because I want to know how things work and look behind the curtain and Mm -hmm. learn so I can apply those best practices to my event. And I think this is just another way to do that. And all from the comfort of, of your home or your walk or you're going to the gym, whatever it is, we're coming to you into your earbuds or headphones. You don't necessarily need to go to an event or go to these places to learn from these people. Right. And this podcast, we hope, will be a good outlet for not just a like an, a contract event planner, like a consultant, but also for those who are full time with a company and maybe they're an event manager there or maybe they have a completely different role, but somehow they get wrapped into events and they want to learn more. So we hope that it's valuable for all of those different circumstances. Yeah, Mary, just like you mentioned, our clients, like the the projects we've worked on, who our client is, is all over the board. You know, there's Mm -hmm. no one person who I would say is our client. But I know in my mind, I would hope, I think some people, the person who is the like solo event person at their company or they're in charge of like heading up events and then working with external vendors, like those are who I definitely picture in my mind. And then expanding on that, I just think event vendors because you can always be learning. And I think the secret sauce to a well-managed event is having good people and good people as a part of that event. And so we're ideally helping educate as well as showcase some people that we think are pretty awesome. Um, to help you learn and ideally save you like time and money is what Mm -hmm. I really want to say, like save your resources. Um, There's so much that I think that if you're, you know, when you hear event planner, I think sometimes there's a negative connotation to it because people think it's just like a party planner and parties are fun. And I don't know if you've seen, there's been like TikToks out that are like what people think events are. And it's like people laughing with like champagne glasses in hand. (laughs) And then what it really is, is like sitting in a utility closet, like typing up changes to your run of show and like cleaning up broken glasses. And it's like, that's more what it's like. (laughs) Um, But just helping kind of, uh, you know, humanize the event process, help give you tools so that you can do it better. Again, back to our better puns. I'm sure we'll have many over all of the (laughs) podcast episodes, but just do things better and more efficient. Um, You'll learn from me over the next, all the episodes. I'm a big fan of efficiency for any reason. You should just be more efficient. So ideally we're helping save you time and resources by taking out time out of your day to listen to this podcast. Yeah, and the structure for the podcast is it's going to, you know, there's going to be a wide variety. We want to provide multiple learning experiences and opportunities to share. And so that's going to look a little bit like Logan and I um, just talking sometimes, kind of like we are today, but it'll be about a certain topic. Um, Maybe it's a topic that we felt like would be super helpful or that someone has asked us to speak about. So we'll do a little bit of that. And of course, we're also going to have guests from all over the event world. Um, whether they are another event planner, a vendor, you know, just all those key partners that Logan was just talking about. So we hope to bring them on as well. And then, of course, we're going to mix it in with some fun, some little tidbits, little event facts, um, maybe hopefully even little giveaways and things like that. And so um, we hope to keep it exciting and, and concise, too, because we know you're all busy, but hope that it can be valuable for the time that you are spending with us. Yeah, definitely. And we're big on those tangible tips. So our goal is going to be to have we have some bonus tip um, for you at the end of every every episode that you can, you know, the next day or immediately as you stop listening to apply to your event planning, event management, event hosting or event attending experience. Um, So that's what one of those fun little Easter eggs, I guess, we'll be we'll be leaving in our episodes for you. Yeah, and just to tease some of those upcoming topics to dig into them just a little deeper. Um, 
We'll talk about things like how to hire a specific caterer, or maybe if you're just building your event business, how to build that or how to get your first client. Um, maybe we'll talk a little bit about imposter syndrome or um, just a number of other things. Logan, is there anything else that you want to call out for that? Yeah, I think I'd also say we're doing a lot of stuff that's about events, but also to call out both Mary and I are small business owners. Uh, we're both solo entrepreneurs. Solopreneurs, I think, is a new word from 2020. <laughs> yeah. um, so we will also be teasing in and maybe and having entire episodes dedicated to that process of just running your own business. Because in addition to producing events and planning events, we are also running a business and with it comes its own challenges. So I think mm -hmm. um, that can also be another niche of topics that you can expect to see from us in the coming months. Right. We started from the bottom. Now we're here. So we hope we can share all that with you. I guess I'll speak for myself, Logan. No, <laughs> I started you, from the bottom. <laughs> you pay it, you pay it forward. So much of like what you do as a business owner is so similar to what you're doing in events where a lot of it of why you got where you are is because somebody showed you the way or let you know and learn from their experience. Like that is something that I, I know when I always look back, it was always people either sharing with me, going to coffee with me, or physically like letting me observe what they were doing or help out with what they were doing. And the same thing as a business owner and as, a, as a, an event planner. So I think any kind of value like that that we can keep bringing, we're excited to, to do that with you guys. I think then we could probably also talk about a, a little bit of our topic structure if they're going to be timeless or you know I, I like evergreen is something that i always talk about when i do i do youtube videos as well um, i'll shout out my own youtube channel right now if you just search logan clements on youtube you can see more event tips and tricks but one of the things is we're going to talk about some some episodes might be very timely for the moment like right now we're all living in covid and the <laughs> restrictions that covid has placed on the live event industry and as that opens up we might have episodes that are kind of that kind of about the specific things that are happening right now. But a lot of what we're going to be talking about does apply no matter if you're listening to it today or listening to us 10 years from now. We are wanting to provide that value for you in the long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and as Logan said, I think that that value, it, it changes over time. I mean, it's always valuable, but based on the current needs of the world. And so we will make sure that we stay current. Um, and we want, like you said before, just to kind of hit this home to be a resource for you and um you'll see show notes that you can reach out to have an email for the podcast if you ever have certain topics that you want us to discuss specifically um so we hope to cater that uh to you as time goes on super cool well i feel like mary now is a good time to jump into some rapid fire questions yeah our goal kind of with this episode is for you guys both to learn what we're kind of coming with with the with the better events episode Better Events podcast, but also to learn a little bit about us. And so, Mary, I'm going to take the first one. Do it. Um, how about, I'm going to change this a little bit though. Who or what is an event icon for you? So it can be a person or it could be at a certain event. Hmm. It's a great question. I, okay. So I'm, for me, I would say that it is, is a person. And that person is Rachel Hollis. And I feel like I've talked about her before with Logan. She is like a motivational person speaker. Um, maybe you have mixed feelings about her. I don't know, but I like her. <laughs> and she uh, is motivating to me, but she started as an event planner and she has got hustle. And so for me, I just, I love her story. It's inspiring for me. So she is my, um, what about you? Logan? I changed the question because I kind of wanted to say a what instead of a who. Say a what. Yes, let's hear it. <laughs> Um, so my event icon is the Olympic Games. I forever since I was a kid wanted to compete at the Olympics and that was my dream and as my Olympic ath athletic perspective kind of or I guess prospective is probably prospective dreams is a better word. <laughs> um, as that kind of dwindled a little bit, I realized my I evolved and kind of wanted then to work at the Olympic Games and I did get the opportunity back in 2018 to volunteer at the um, Pyeongchang Winter Winter Olympics, and I was just a Team USA volunteer. And as an event person going to it, it was fascinating because you think the Olympics are big, like when you watch them on your TV from home. But when you're there, it is as if like 150 events were happening all at the same time for like two weeks. <laughs> and so it's as just like as an event organizer, it is a, the scale of it is amazing. And the fact that I'm just a big sports nerd. So it's like you paying me to be in a sporting event just feels like I've hit the jackpot. So that is my event icon is the Olympic Games and getting the opportunity to work at the games will make my life when that opportunity arises. Yeah, and I love how you just say, you know, once again, I'm gonna call it 
Oregon has done a lot of events that I think that alone is really cool. <laughs> Time. <laughs> All right, another rapid fire question for you. What is your go-to item in your event kit for like an in-person event, obviously? Yeah, so for in-person, I'm a dork. It's a clipboard, but it's not just a regular clipboard. It's got like storage in it. So it can hold papers and pens and an extra charger for my for my phone and everything all inside the clipboard. And I got this probably back in 29, start of 2019. So I've only gotten to use it for a year before we all got shut down. But it was mind blowing because the idea that I could ha hold things in it because then I didn't have to have them balanced on the clipboard and I was running around grabbing things and Mary knows as event people, we usually have to carry like everything and anything under the sun. Mm -hmm. And having that all fit in my clipboard that my run a show timeline can be on just blew my mind. And I bought it at Target for probably like $12.99, something ridiculous that has brought me endless joy since then. <laughs> How about you? What is That's your go-to go -to item in your event kit? Yeah, I was also going to board, but mine is way more basic than yours. So I now I need to see yours. I want to be inspired. You need to show it to me. I Yeah, a clipboard or something similar to that. I, I used to do um, a lot of events that were outdoors. And so we live in Washington and it would rain a lot and the show must go on. So we'd still do the event. And so I found myself using like a th three ring binder and like sheet protecting every single type of piece of paper that I would need because everything was just getting so wet. And I needed, I, ha I needed to use paper. And I also, how I work is I like to write things down. If somebody comes at me and they need something, I have to jot it down real quick because other things come at me and I want to remember what, what needs to be done. So I want to see yours. I feel like I'll be super inspired by it. So for me though, I would say, you know, some type of clipboard or like storage, to something that you're carrying around with you. I'll, we'll post a picture of it on, a, on our social media, on our Instagram, our Better Events podcast Instagram. I'll post a picture of my clipboard because I, I have a dorky photo of me from it, from an in-person nice. event two years ago where I clearly am just in love with my clipboard. <laughs> if you guys haven't picked up on them, we're a little bit of event dorks, but cool dorks, if that's allowed to say. It is, um, yes. I feel like a follow up on that then is like, what's your favorite item in your virtual world? Because I feel like we've with virtual events, we've had to change our game. I mean, mm -hmm. we do a whole workshop nowadays on how to present yourself professionally in the virtual world. And that can involve a lot, a lot of different items than we would have needed if we're running around in person. Do you have a personal favorite of something you're using at home now to produce virtual events? Yeah, mine, I would say is a second monitor, like a second screen. And I don't think it's like, it's, it's not necessary to create a virtual event using a second screen. However, I do really enjoy using it because I feel like I can just manage everything a little bit better, um, especially when you're using a you know video conferencing system. I can like put that on one screen and then deal with my run of show or anything else on my other screen. Um, so for me, it's a second monitor. What about you, Logan? Your favorite item in the virtual world? I have to say my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I bought this years ago when I was going to do a podcast and I recorded one episode of that podcast. It was just going to be like talking with my friends about traveling mm -hmm. and um, then put this podcast, this microwave, never used it again. And then when COVID hit and all of a sudden we're coming from home, I broke it out again. And I just like, I mean, I can get like really close to it. And I just feel like then I'm living my NPR late night Yes, like and radio host fantasy. <laughs> so I'm gonna not do that the whole time. Maybe yeah, eventually you'll see us <laughs> music on the in the background, like quiet. Exactly. Like, it's just like I'm your disc music. jockey. I used to. I also yeah. have over the ear headphones I can wear, which actually I might. I should wear those for future episodes. But it yes. de definitely gives me like a late night radio DJ vibe, mm -hmm. and I think it's been really yeah. helpful to just increase the production value because so much of what we're doing virtually is also like your first impression. So if you have really bad audio as a virtual event producer, planner, and you go into a call and you're trying to convince them to have you produce their whole virtual event and you don't sound good, uh, you know, you, you really definitely need to practice what you preach. So I always thank former past me for having invested in this way before I knew we would be using it almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, uh, I love your mic. So super valuable. Okay, next question. What is your favorite type of event to plan? But you have to pick one. So what is it? I would have to say it's the game day presentation at a live sporting event. Uh, I've done a lot of basketball has been, or volleyball are my two. So it's technically two, but one. And so when I say sports presentation, what is that? That's the, it's all the live entertainment that goes along with the in arena or in stadium experience. So if you go to like a Mariners baseball game, there's going to be the mascot. They might have some hot dogs they throw in the stands right now. They probably won't. I'm curious to see what happens 
after COVID. But in the before times, they'd throw hot dogs in the stands or T-shirts and there's a dance cam, you know, there's a dance cam or a kiss cam that goes around and all of that's scripted. And there's actually like stage managers who have props like you do with a theater mm. production and a producer and that's all. There's dress rehearsals that happen and you practice it out and granted with live sports, you can't totally plan what's going to happen. You can't make the team win or make the team lose. And so you have to come up with contingency plans to kind of feel drive the energy of the crowd but also react to it at the same time and again like i said earlier if i'm at a live sporting event it does it doesn't feel like work honestly i feel like I, i'm always like pinch me this is what i get to do for fun mm -hmm. um like I, I would be here by choice on my own but if i'm getting paid that's even better <laughs> how about you what is your favorite type of event to plan Mine, you know, as cliche as it is, because I said my background's in fundraising, but it is fundraising events. It's like you said, I, I, I love what I do and fundraisers are my favorite. And But it's definitely a specific type of fundraiser that's my favorite and it's the ones that are unique. So um, although I do enjoy like your typical gala or your auction or your luncheon, my favorite ones are the ones that are different. So um, some exciting way to raise money, maybe it's like a, a type of party or something like that, but you're still getting that mission across and you're having fun. Um, and it's a different different type of setup. So those unique little, I like to call them like little boutique fundraisers. Those are my favorite. I love that. Yeah. Um, so our next one, I guess we're going to go with what's your favorite part of an event? I would say that I love to start an event with a bang and end it with one. So obviously <laughs> the meat of the event is extremely important. So I'm not trying to discredit that, but my my favorite part would be the like the physical entrance of an event. Um, I guess whether it's virtual or in person, but that first impression that guests are having when they arrive, I want it to be, if it's a themed event, like super, super part of the theme, like, you know, so they're just immersed like immediately. And that is my favorite. And so like that applies to their way out as well. I want them to leave with like a little tchotchke or something fun that they can take with them. That's like, or the I guess just like, you know, tying that, that beautiful little ribbon on the event and sealing it. Um, so yeah, the beginning and the end, my favorite parts. Oh, I love that. Well, I'm going to go in the middle because I really love the audience interaction in the middle of an event. And whether that's, again, I'm going back to my sports stuff. I mean, I'll, again, we can share these videos later on social. Um, but there's a great video of me banging along to the bongo cam with fans in China because they loved and it was a overlay video feed that if you saw yourself on the jumbotron you would see on the screen little bongo drums below you and our dj was playing bongo music and so the entire arena is filled with people just going like this but like really excited and they're moving their hands up and down and i'm <laughs> next to the dj and it's a video of me and i'm just as excited as the fans are and so anything that has that like audience interaction sports is i think to an extreme but even if you're doing something corporate or anything interactive that that gets you know a photo booth or an interactive food display or something that gets the audience involved and not just passively sitting there and receiving whatever you're trying to send at them. Mm -hmm. Those are always my favorite parts because I love their reaction. And that's something in virtual events I know I've been missing because we're doing these big productions and the audience is, you know, they're in the chat and I can't see if we're like putting a smile on their face or you right. know, getting that kind of emotional reaction out of them that we're going for. And that's what I know fuels what I love to do is nothing tickles me more than seeing attendees enjoy themselves. Agreed. Yeah, that's super great. OK, cool. So let's see. What's the most interesting food item that you've seen at an event? As I'm really curious for you to answer this, too, since you've done events um, internationally. So let's hear it. I have it it's so funny. We're so with like apart from a food <laughs> element, like because of virtual events, you know, you could do, you could mail people stuff. But yeah. I, I think it goes back to my last answer too. It's interactive. Like I'm a mm -hmm. sucker for a, my last one of my last events in Seattle before everything shut down was wanting to do a s'mores bar with mm -hmm. a local catering company because I and I loved it though it hit a snafu and we had to pivot to something else because the building would not allow an open flame, even though I said it was a controlled flame to toast the marshmallows, they still would not allow it in this historic building. So we had to pivot to a donut bar, which was just as oh, fun because we yum. had live, um, like the bakers were there and like would put whatever toppings you wanted on your donut. Um, so for me, I, that is what I like. Again, that interactive part that you're getting a, a chance to build it and taking twists on it versus you know, a plated meal in front of you. How about you? 
Yeah, that goes along with mine as well. Um, there's one vendor specifically that I really enjoy working with and they do liquid nitrogen ice cream. And so that's interactive as well because they do it on the spot. They bring like their big liquor, liquid nitrogen can and they, they make the ice cream with the cream base. And so a guest come and they order like the type that they want and they'll make it in front of them. And it just takes like a minute to make one. And so it's super awesome. And it looks really cool because you have like the, the liquid nitrogen. Um, obviously I'm gonna like show that I'm not a sciencey person right now, but like the smoke or whatever it is coming out of it. Super and it looks cool. really cool. So I would say, um, yeah, something interactive like you're saying like that is, is super fun. I love that. All right. And um, what's your favorite way to decompress after an event? Well, my first answer is like sleep. <laughs> I don't know if you feel that way too, but when I'm done with an event, I like, oh man, I need to catch up on some Z's for sure. Um, but so besides the sleeping, um, I do really enjoy taking time for myself. You know, after we know that the client's taken care of, just now then taking care of myself. So whatever that looks like, um, it usually is a lazy day, especially with the the in-person events they're more physically taxing and so i just like to kind of chill i would say so anything that i can do to make that happen um usually just you know nothing that exciting but that's my favorite way to decompress what about you what's the what's the trick anything i should add to my sleep is i mean you, you said the number one i feel like any event professional no matter what you are doing what element of the event you're a part of sleep is probably the thing you need to catch up on um i know i miss just the like decompressing with the fellow event people you worked with, whether you're on a, a team or it's you and the rest of the vendors or it's you and the client, you know, whoever it is. I know that's again, something in the virtual world, I laugh that we don't know what to do with ourselves after the stream ends, after you and the Zoom meeting. Um, I've definitely been struggling with that in the virtual world of figuring out how to decompress because I'm very, ex I'm extroverted. If you can't tell podcast listeners, um, I make a lot of hand motions. I love talking <laughs> and people. And so to me, like I recharge by being around people. And then, yes, I've learned the hard way. I do still need sleep. Uh, I joke, I wish I was Wonder Woman and could just operate at a high level all the time. But I've learned it's not sustainable, especially when we do projects that are longer in mm -hmm. duration. So, um, that can always be a challenge. But for me, it's getting to debrief and hang out with my team and just celebrate what we've done. Because a lot of these events, I think some people don't see the amount of time that goes into them. Yeah, definitely. So true. Well, thank you for the rapid fire questions. That's exciting. Um, that's fun. And we also said that sometimes in our podcast, we are going to end with like a little bonus tip or something like that. So it is bonus tip time. And real quickly, we are going to talk about project management software recommendations. As an event planner, it's a lot of project management. And so, Logan, what do you use for your project management software? Ooh, this is one I, I definitely use Google, just Google documents and like templates that I've made that I work to manage like the overall project timeline and small elements of the project. In terms of like software that's meant to like productivity software, I would say I use Toggle, T-O-G-G-L, and we'll link in the show notes to that. It's a time tracking software. It enables me to track my time based on project, based on project and client. You can add tags if you really want to get into it, but I am a nerd about tracking my time. Not a lot of time my clients don't ask for it, but that's been something that I've loved learning about myself and learning when I'm productive and that you don't have to work 50, 60 hours, 40 hours a week even to be really productive. You could work 20 and just be as productive. And I only know that because I have the data behind it of um, tracking my time. So how about you? What kind of project management software are you using these days? My favorite one to use is ClickUp. I like ClickUp a lot. I've used it for a while now. Um, it really does keep me organized truly. And you can set, you know, due dates for things. And I have like a bunch of different, I basically have one folder for each client with all my tasks. And so that's really helpful for me. It sends you reminders uh, when you have something that's coming up that's due and it's also free. So I'm a big free person. And so it, there's a, like a, an advanced paid version as well, but the free version works really well for me. And so um, that's what I would recommend. It's super awesome. And I can link that um, in the show notes as well. So. Awesome. I love it. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our, our episode one. I can't believe we're, we're one down, Mary. <laughs> um, I guess our big question, you know, where can you find us next? Our plan is to come to you every single week. Um, so check out next week for our next episode. And we're excited to continue this conversation with you guys and help you create, host, and attend better events. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.